We're going to talk tonight about building better HLS players. Um, and I'm going to like, I'm going to start with some details and some encoding settings, just as kind of a reference. And then it's going to get a little faster near the end as I switch over to our cool new GitHub project that we're soliciting feedback from you all on. Um, and if you want to play around with it, that'd be so cool. So OK, let me, let me start. OK, we're building better place, but we're also being spec compliant. What do I mean by spec compliant? I mean, like, we're not to, I'm not going to talk tonight about doing things like changing the resolution of your content in the middle of a single rendition. That's not entirely spec compliant. Um, I'm not going to talk about doing things like having vastly varying uh, bit rates in a single uh, uh, rendition. That's not entirely spec compliant. You can do it, and people are doing it. I just want to call that out. Um, it's just not what I'm talking about tonight. I'm going to try and tighten it down a little bit. OK, so I'm going to use this example. It's an open source Netflix crosswalk video. And if you want to play along at home and try this out and, and do your own investigation, it's only five seconds long. That's great, because a lot of the tools I'm using take forever to encode. So like, if you want to do this on like a five minute long video, you just need to like multiply everything by, I don't know, 30 times or something like that. Um, OK, cool. Um, and I pulled down the original Y4M that Netflix very kindly gave to the Ziff collection and turned it into something that's a little bit easy to work with. I turned it into 1080p 30 rather than uh, 4K 60. OK, so let's take a look at it. It's crisp. It's HD. Look at the hair. OK, cool. Um, great. This is the HD crisp original version. Um, I encoded it um, using these settings. And you can see that my, my original is basically VMAF 100, except for the very first frame, which I think is a little artifact there. But um, it's a really high quality mezzanine, I promise. OK, cool. Um, so we're going to evaluate some video quality. And, and you've heard talks like this, this like two meetups ago. So I'm just going to skip straight to the part where everyone loves VMAF and we're going to use it. Um, it's the current leader. Let's use it and do some plotting. Let's get some charting. Let's, let's dive in. OK, great. So I'm going to take my original file here and give you all an example of what we might do when we're trying to create a high quality rendition to deliver to our customers. Um, I, the, this should be recorded and online later. Um, and there's a gist here if you want to find the gist and, and take a look. But basically, this is like a bad example. I'm creating a bad file at the start where it's bad. I'm using preset faster. Um, and then I'm using exactly the same bit rate, exactly the same very, very generic settings with very slow. Um, we're going to create some FIFOs for doing efficient VMAF. And this is just an example of the kind of command line you might use when you're evaluating VMAF. A few things to draw your attention to. This is like the hard-coded resolution of the input. You'll need to program that if you want to actually work with this in code. Um, and you can see here that I'm using you know, crosswalk. I'm, I'm dumping out a log to JSON, to which I can then load and plot. Um, and if you'd like, I, I can open source the, the little plot thing I have. So I've created two files, and I've generated the VMAF scores for both of them. And we can take a look. OK, so this is when our job as video engineers is easy. One of these files is just straight up worse than the other. It's exactly the same. Uh, it's almost exactly the same size on disk. I think the good one ends up being like something on the order of a few hundred bytes smaller than the other one. Um, but you can see that when we're doing this comparison, our job is really easy, because we just get to pick the better one. There is literally no downside to picking the one that has higher scores across the board. It's the same size. It's the same resolution. One of these encodes can just be better than the other. So let's look at a, a trickier version. Um, sorry, let's look at the file. You can see this is the a bad one. You should see some artifacting in the hair this time. And then in the next one, it looks crisper, but there's still a few issues there. You'll note, if we go back, that we didn't actually get above a VMAF score of 90. So you should still be able to see some artifacts in these videos. OK. So we can do an objective comparison of encodes. Um, and often, this is a useful tool for evaluating, say, a new encoder where we're, where, uh, comparing it against an old one, or, or, or we have new codecs and things like that, where we can do some reasonable comparisons. Um, and like in this scenario, the only thing that changed was the amount of processing required, which may or may not be um, something that you need to take care of in, in your workflows. Um, but 
the end result is better or worse. But let's actually bring this down to the real world. When we're creating a new M38 manifest, how can we go about picking a good top rendition to deliver to our users? We have a 1080p input. We want to deliver a really good quality 1080p out to our users. And we probably don't want to deliver it at the 11 megabits per second that my encode turned out to be. That's probably going to be a waste of our users' bandwidth. So inherently, we're trying to do a dance between we don't want to deliver raw video. We want to deliver something that is encoded. And we want to deliver good quality. So now I'm going to make this a little more complicated. I'm going to keep the same settings for my good encode. And I'm going to create a better and a best. Um, and I'm just going to change the bit rate by 1.25 megabits per second each step. And you can see here I'm going to do the same exact dump of the actual qualities. And this time, things are going to get a little more tricky for us, because our better is a lot better, but it uses 1.25 megabits more. And our best is a little bit better, but it uses, again, 1.25 megabits more. So how do we decide which one of these is actually better to deliver to our customers? Um, you can see here I've included the harmonic mean VMAF score in the bottom left. We can probably reason and say that 81.7 for a top rendition is probably not going to be enough bits. That Our users are probably going to complain that the video doesn't look great for them. Um, but the difference at the high end between the 94 and the 98.9 might not be as noticeable. See if you can notice it. Here's one of them. And here's the next. Can you, did you see a difference? Can you see a difference? Does one of them look like it's worth spending an extra 1.5 or 1.25 megabits per second to send down to your, your users? Um, hands up if you think it was the first one that was higher quality. Second one? OK. Um, it, was the, it was the second one. It was an easy one. I just did them in order. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not being that complicated. Um, but the point I'm trying to make with that is, in general, VMAF 94, 95-ish is probably going to be sufficient for our users to get a really good experience from us. So when we're delivering content, we actually need to make this, this decision, this balance between do we want to deliver extra bits, and are they going to be worth it? Um, where we, we can deliver something that just flatlines at a VMAF 100 score if we're willing to sacrifice our users' bit rate. But there's a deeper question there, which is like, well, what, what bit rate are we targeting? Like, wh who's watching this content, right? So our better encode is most likely the best one for us to actually use in production here, but it is a bit of a judgment call. So how can we take these judgment calls and, and build more of a framework around them? How do we compare manifests? Right? So I just talked about the top rendition. We can, we can try and make judgment calls. We can try and determine the top. But uh, comparing one or two encodes against each other is pretty. We just did that. right? We can, we can all work through the problem together. We can do some encoding. We can look at the results. We can try and reason about the trade-offs that our systems might make between the bit rates and the processing power that we're going to give and the VMAF targets we're going to give. We can reason about doing things like per-title encoding to make our encoding even better. But how do we compare an entire manifest? How do we compare a set of decisions? How do we compare this to this? OK, let me make it a little easier for you. Right? I've, I'll call out the important bits. There's two manifests. They're both well-formed. and on the left, we have the first manifest. On the right, we have the second. And you can see that a few of the decisions we've made are a little different. Um, but the big one that you should jump out at you from this is we're missing the, the, the 1280 by 7, 674 or our, our 720p, uh, right? Because this is not 16 by 9 content. We, we're missing the 720p. So surely. The manifest on the left is better than the manifest on the right. Well, better how? What, is, what does better mean? What, what does that even mean in the context of delivering stuff to our users? Well, who's watching? Right? Like, 
what I haven't told you is, in comparing these two manifests, is, there, is everyone on mobile? Is everyone watching on in Europe and they have crazy great internet, I'm told, uh, for, for cheap prices? Um, let, so we, we, it, what I'm hinting at is, in order to understand whether the, the decisions we're making are good or bad, we need to decide, we need to first to understand who are we making these decisions for. So here's some example, slightly noised, slightly average data that a company such as Mux might be working with as estimates for global bitrate distribution. And you can see here that it, there's this kind of big spike early on of lots of users have low bit rates. There's this suspicious spike at 1.5 megabits where we think that a lot of providers out there on mobile especially are throttling connections. And then there's a slow kind of burn down where once we actually start getting, and I've, I've averaged out above 10 megabits here, once we start getting down into this range, there aren't a whole lot of users out there. So if we're gonna deliver an eight megabit top rendition, we're gonna start getting into the question of why and for whom and is that six or, you know, from the early example, four VMAF points difference actually going to make, make a noticeable difference to our users. But it gets more complicated than that. I want you to imagine a newsfeed scenario where we're trying to deliver a manifest that's going to be watched in a little player as it scrolls by to catch people's eye, and then you're going to click on it to make it full screen if you, you engage with the content. In that case, you might have lots of users with lots of, I've, I've, this is a, a noisy, averaged, sampled, um, with distribution that you might see. This is not necessarily real. This is just an example that I'm giving you. Um, you would need to calculate this for your actual user base, but you can see that if we used this, we can see a lot of people up at the uh, 1920 by 1080 end. Sorry, the, the 1080, this is widths here. So the 1920 end has a lot of users, but also in our distribution, we're seeing almost a qu full quarter of our user base here down at like 412. So how do we combine this user data and our encoding decisions with VMAF in a way that we can actually make good decisions? So today I'm introducing our new open source project called VMAF Analyzer, where we're trying to think through some of these problems and trying to do it in an open way, build upon some of the work that Netflix has released and other folks are thinking about um, that we're using to guide some of our new decisions around encoding content. Um, so thinking about it from a core algorithm, what we're trying to do is say that for each of the renditions that we create, for each of our bit rate buckets that we know we have, we have users in, um, at each of the resolutions that people in that bucket are going to be using, assuming an, uh, what is it, an uncorrelated uh, variable there, an independent variable between bit rate and resolution. That's not entirely true, but it's true-ish. It's true enough to be useful. Um, we can say, like, what is the VMAF score that people watching in that bucket would get? That is, are they, what rendition at that bit rate are they actually going to get? And what resolution are they going to watch? And what is the resulting VMAF score and what percentage of our overall viewership will get that, that score? And then for every single one of these buckets, we can add them all together to get what we, what's called like an overall effective delivered VMAP score. Okay. So we open sourced it. Ooh, let me just show you our project. Um, we've written it in Go, and it wraps a few open source tools. Um, you can see that we've, we've wrapped a few FFmpeg commands that you might find useful around probing and dumping streams from HLS manifests and decoding them in ways that you can use as inputs for VMAF. Um, we've also wrapped some of the VMAF tools, specifically the VMAF open source wrapper. Ooh, where am I? Um, VMAF OSS exec. Um, in a way that we can generate VMAF scores in each of our bitrate resolution combination buckets. Um, and this tool has um, some sample data as well that matches the 
resolution percentages and bitrate percentage, bandwidth percentages. Um, we did this in 16 pixel buckets, but then actually decided against it, but it can be as granular as you need it, depending on your users. A common example might be you have a 960 player in a, in a, in a feed which you only expect people to full screen. So you can use 960 and uh, 1920, sorry, you can use 960 by 540 and 1920 by 1080 as your two buckets as an initial way to get, get started using this tool, because VMAP can be quite expensive to run. And when we run this tool on those two manifests I showed previously, we can see that actually, given our data and given where our users fall in that distribution, the impact of removing this 1280 by 674 rendition from our manifest is negligible. Basically, our user base is just not going to notice if we, we move down. Um, and you can use insights like this to better control your cost and better control your caching effici efficiency um, when you're actually evaluating your encoding decisions. Um, and this is kind of the thinking and the tool that we're using for our new, it's not a product pitch, I promise, our new audience adaptive encoding where we're trying to blend information we have from our models about predicting where a good top rendition bitrate is actually going to be with the data that we collect about overall viewer uh, uh, usage conditions and bandwidth conditions to build better manifests that are more efficient and more effective for our users. Um, thank you very much. Uh, definitely, that's something that our model doesn't account for right now, that note, that, that concept of a shift. But the shift isn't necessarily going to be as high. Um, if you look at the earlier example I gave, like the, um, this one, there's already a big shift between uh, this, uh, even in one megabit, there's a large shift. So it, we're, what we're trying to think through is how do we account for all of those variables in some kind of score, right? Like how do we actually quantify that notion of largest, largest shift um, alongside what the impact is on, on overall viewership? So. But yes, it's, it's an interesting point that we uh, don't currently account for. We assume right now for our tool's sake an original resolution of 1080p and that we will have uh, a master mana, a, a reference that is 1080p. Um, and we have some algorithms to scale some of our decisions down when we get things like 720p inputs. Um, but comparing two different videos that have two different resolutions is, is tricky. Within one manifest, comparing the different resolutions we scale both the reference and the rendition to the resolution of one of the buckets. Um, as long as you're OK assuming that as the resolution gets smaller, that the, viewing, the absolute viewing distance remains the same. And as you go down, the, the three height turns into 4.5 height, turns into five height, um, which is probably the best metric we have right now, um, then the tool still works to f at, at figuring out how things are going to be. Uh, this is a synthetic example, and I haven't actually, uh, sorry. this is a synthetic example to easily show the tool. Out in the real world, some of the more, some of the complexities get even more complex, like Will your player, if it's at a lower resolution, even load a higher resolution and, and play it? Um, the other thing that gets a lot more complicated is that this is, is assuming a VMAP model. You technically need to run this twice for both mobile and desktop and, and create essentially two different numbers, which you then blend together to figure out your your VMAP if you are using the same manifest for both mobile and desktop. Um, in general, that's just an open challenge right now, though, because we'd probably see something like a VMAF 95 from this rendition if we use the mobile model.
Thank you very much.